701, which is close. We'll uh, call this meeting of the Epson County Board of Education to order. And our first order of business this evening would be to ask you all to move up. <laughs> you know? Last time we had 300 people here, not enough chairs. <laughs> so we overdid it. So now we need people to move up so we don't have to yell at you. If you don't mind. Yeah. We don't bite or anything. And I would think the administration officials would set the example. <laughs> Miranda's get that idea. Tell Keith to sit in the front row next time. <laughs> That's better. Doesn't that, doesn't that feel better? Doesn't that feel cozier? Now, can we all stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Dr. Allman, give us the mission statement, okay. please. Uh, mission statement. The mission of the Upshur County Schools is to provide academic preparation, social responsibility, employability, and a desire of lifelong learning. We all almost ought to say amen after that. Amen. Thank you. We've all had a, oh, sorry, let the clerk note that uh, all members of the board are present this evening, which is a delight. And uh, you've all had a chance to review the agenda. Do we have any uh, amendments? We, we do deficits? have a, a couple of additions and uh, amendments under you have personnel in front of you, and the changes have been uh, italicized and bold for you. And we also have added a, a couple items to the consent agenda, which is mm -hmm. also in front of you there. And those are field trip chaperones. Very good. Seeing those, uh, do I hear a motion to approve the adjusted or amended agenda? Thank you, Dr. Allman. Second. Thank you, Mr. Suter. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Had a chance to review the minutes of May 9th regular meeting. Any amendments or additions or corrections to those? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to approve. Thank you, Mrs. Bellamy. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Suter. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Moving on to the next thing that my uh, little machine here won't move over to. There we go. Acknowledgements and or announcements. Tonight is... Well, before we get into our acknowledgements, I, I'd like to give you a few announcements, if I may. Okay. Uh, tomorrow at 1.30, Rock Cave Elementary School will be celebrating the opening of the walking trail. That was a project that was started all gosh, four years ago, five. Uh, five years ago, it's through grants and a lot of cooperation with outside agencies and it's come to fruition. So tomorrow, 1.30, you're invited to go out for the grand opening of, of their walking tra trail. Thursday morning, we're having our annual Rachel's Challenge Field Day event. That'll be up at the high school beginning approximately 8.30, 9 o'clock. Uh, this is a time when all the participants in the schools that have participated in Rachel's Challenge Kindness clubs, random act of kindness. We'll all get together as a, as a one body, all working together to treat each other fairly. And they, they have a wonderful activity. The Mountaineer will be there, and my understanding is Phil Fister may also be there. So uh, that's Thursday morning. You're all invited to attend that. And this is the first year that we'll have every school in the county represented at, at our Rachel's Challenge. We're very, very pleased with that. Great. And I also want to announce and, and thank everybody for the hard work that they did last week on West Test. Uh, our student attendance was fantastic. Uh, each day of the West Test, it didn't go, uh, the absence rate didn't go above 3%. Our students were present. They worked hard. They did a good job. And I really want to compliment our staff who worked very hard during, during that week. And our staff attendance for the week of West Test 
was one of the highest that it's been also. So everybody saw the magnitude of, of our standardized testing program and, uh, and pitched in and did a great job. Those are the announcements. Uh, did Kelsey Claypool make it? Okay, Kelsey's not here. So uh, we're going to move on uh, to acknowledgments and we're going to move past the Fred Everly uh, folks because they're not able to be with us tonight. So I do want to recognize, do a recognition, and I hope the board would join me in recognizing the Risa 7 Teacher of the Year is one of our own from Upshur County this year. Uh, Sally Miller Collins, who's an art teacher at Buckhannon Upshur Middle School, has been serving the students of Upshur County for mm, years. Uh, <laughs> Sally and I actually went to Wesley together, and I want Wesley together, and I won't tell you our graduation year, but it was... I look at, we're going to do retirees a little bit longer. Uh, they have less seniority than we do, don't they, Sally? But we are very, very proud of, of Sally. She's done a fabulous job at Buckingham Upshur Middle School for the students. So the board is joining us. Sally, we do have a little uh, token of our appreciation for your hard work and dedication. You'll join Thank me up you. here with the board. Thank you very much. much. We're very proud of you. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Good Thank job, you all. Sal. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> very much. Forever. I know. I have stay forever. I don't know. I'm not tired of it. <laughs> Good. I'm not tired of it. Yeah. This is sweet. Yeah. Oh, you thank had you. Thank you very much. I know. I did. Yeah, I appreciate that. Anyhow, you do. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay. So again, Sally, congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. No speech right now. I know. She's <laughs> thankful. We didn't. We didn't tell you that you needed to do thirty minutes. <laughs> This is the, also the, the time where we do want to acknowledge our, our retirees, uh, those folks that have dedicated their lives to the, to the children in the community of Upshur County. Uh, many of them you'll see have years ranging from 36 years uh, to 20 years to 18 years, and these are the folks that have worked so hard for so many years for, for our kids. And as we tallied up our re retirements and their years of experience, uh, at the end of this school year, our years of experience through retirement that will be leaving our school system totals 800 years. Uh, that's a lot of experience. Lot of experience. Uh, we have new younger people coming in, but we will not be able to uh, replace the experience that you all have. So we thank you so very, very much for your, for your years of service. 800 years, uh, Mrs. Hissom gave me the total of that today, and she said, you won't believe this. Not only is it a lot of years, it comes out even to 800 years. <laughs> if we took Mr. Pettit out of there, it might be a lot less. Uh, so what, what we'd like to do now is recognize those individuals and ask them to come up and allow us to give them a little token of our appreciation. So, so wait a minute, am I to understand that you and Sally have more time than 800 years? Uh, <laughs> Sally does. <laughs> she, she's got to live with Roy. That's right. <laughs> kind of like a dog's life. <laughs> uh, so when I, when I call your name, if you please come up and, and be recognized, we'd appreciate it. Pam Allman, Buckhannon Upshur Middle School. Jeanette Anderson, aide. Karen Bennett or Karen Carlisle Bennett, instructional aide. <laughs> Kathy Chapman, teacher at Buckhannon Upshur High School. Yeah, that's the right. Helen Bunner, secretary, French Creek Elementary School. Paulette Cowley, teacher, Tenerton Elementary School. Trisha Currents, Pat Currents, Tenerton Elementary School. time if you'd like to say something you're more than welcome. Oh gosh, I don't, my kids say I talk too much the way it is. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. been fun, it's been an experience, 
I, I said when it finally got to be just a job, that was the time to say goodbye. And it's not really been a job, but it's I'm having some um, family issues that need to be, my parents are older and need to be helped. And they've given to me and helped me out and saw me through my career, and it's time to give back to them. So I've enjoyed my time in Upshur County and everybody that I know. So it's, the kids have been wonderful. Great. Great. Well, we can get you on the subway. Okay. <laughs> well, I know about that. Um, behind her desk. <laughs> so those of you that are thinking about going into the education field, you don't sit behind your desk, do you, Pat? <laughs> Sandra Davidson, Secretary. Barbara Godwin, Literacy Coach. John Bo Guthrie, Maintenance. John Bo Guthrie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's your turn. Okay. I spent fun. I appreciate the opportunity to work here. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Hope Harper, instructional aide. Ken Harvey, teacher by Cannon Upshur High School. Diane Hill, teacher, Buchanan Academy Elementary School. Jane Johnson, teacher, Buchanan Upshur High School. Ruth Lewis, instructional aide. Kathy Linger, math coach and longtime kindergarten teacher. James Edward McDaniels, Athletic Director of Buchanan Upshur High School. Vicki Posey, Speech Therapist. Barbara Riffle, Cook, Washington District Elementary School. Any words? Well, I've just met a lot of people along the way, and I'll go into the Thank you so very much. <laughs> yeah, you're next. Thomas Tom Riffle, <laughs> foreman, maintenance. Retirement's better. <laughs> That's the whole point. Thank 
Carolyn Sue Sayre, Secretary, Washington District Elementary School. I've enjoyed working at the school and I'll miss the staff and the students. Thank you. Fred Seely, bus driver. Margaret Strauss, aide, Union Elementary School. Sharon Stumbaugh, teacher, Hodgesville. Peggy Swisher, instructional aide, Buckingham and Upshur High School. Marcy Toothman, teacher, Buchanan Academy Elementary Buchanan Academy Elementary School. And those are our retirees for this, this school year. We will be approving some, some more retirees actually this evening, I believe. And, and some of the folks uh, that we honor tonight retired either during the school year or at the very end of last year. So we, we take tonight's opportunity to recognize them too. So again, on behalf of the school system, thank you all very much. For all those who weren't here tonight, let's give them a round. Yeah. They work just as hard as the rest of you do. Thank you. <laughs> uh, if the retirees could take a moment and gather with Ms. Clutter, she'd like to take a couple of pictures. And yes, you have to be at work tomorrow. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Is that it, Mr. Lane? Yes, that is. We're going to move on now to uh, our senior project summary presentation <coughs> by Mrs. Westfall, Nancy Westfall, and uh, a couple of her students. Thank you for uh, allowing us to be on the agenda so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Based on the mission statement, I think that the students worked hard. I hope that they will be lifelong learners, and I think that they were challenged as the year has progressed. I have students here who are going into education, technology, um, psychology, some choosing a different path after this year for various reasons, but that's part of the learning and the growth and based on the economy money's tight so should not waste so um, your first senior Hi. my name is Katrina Smith your name's what? Katrina Smith Katrina Katrina Hi. My portfolio. Would you like me to stand? Right there's fine. Okay. Um, you really have to speak up. Okay. Let me start off by saying that this senior English class has helped me grow academically and personally this year. Mrs. Westfall has pushed us all to do our best work and has never failed to help us in any way. We started the school year off with complex literature and a research paper. Our research paper had to be on a career that we wanted to venture into after our education. I chose to do my research paper on clinical psychology and the types of disorders that it treats and the people that it deals with. The challenge of this paper was intense and 
it was harder than any other paper that I've had to do in any of my other English classes. I had to correct my mistakes many times before the paper was of my best work. Mrs. Westfall was always there to help me though, and I feel very proud of this paper because I feel that it's my best. Um, after the paper was finished, we had to do a project, and the project consisted of field work hours, a portfolio, a presentation, and a speech. To say in the least that this project was time consuming, frustrating, and difficult. The stress that came along with this project was more stress than I've handled in school, and I've worked hard on this project. The letters written in my portfolio um, have been letters that I've never written before in English class, so that was a new experience for me. And Mrs. Westfall also taught us how to write a resume, which I will use in college and jobs, so that's an important thing to learn. <clears throat> the portfolio was honestly probably the easiest part, even though it was challenging, it was my first time ever creating a portfolio. Um, completing the fieldwork hours for this project was very difficult because it's hard to find hours in um, clinical psychology because most of that stuff is contained, like you're not allowed to interrupt it or be in it. But finally I found a hospice nurse that would let me job shadow her. Now a nurse doesn't really sound like something that would have to deal with psychology, but hospice is a program that um, takes care of people with six months or less to live in their home. So they have a lot of experience in a particular area of psycho psychology, excuse me. <clears throat> During one of the visits that I went with her on, there was a man in his early 50s and he was soon to die. It was a heartbreaking situation because he had a son about my age and a young daughter and a lovely wife. And they were all so nice to me. They didn't mind one bit me being there, watching what she had to do. And just experiencing that really gave me inspiration to do my project. And another inspiration was that my mother's boyfriend had recently lost his son, who was 23. And I've had to witness his grief every day since it's happened. So this just gave me more determination to figure out what to do on my project. I based my project on grief and death and the five stages of grief and it was a challenging project but I really learned from it like I mean every person deals with grief in their own way it's a completely individual experience no one else can help you go through that grief it is all your own there are, people can be there for you but they'll never feel feel what you're feeling and I've learned that um, with this that the five stages of grief which is um, denial anger bargaining depression and acceptance not everyone makes it to that acceptance level some people can never accept the grief of their lost loved one and it's just a very hard situation to deal with and all the emotions that you go through with it no one's ever going to be able to experience those emotions. But overall, this project has helped me learn personally how to deal with people who are going through a situation that's heartbreaking. And also, I think that in psychology, it will help me go through the classes that I need to be prepared for. Um, that's kind of short, but thank you. It's nice to work. My name is Jacob Cutright. 
I'm currently a senior at the Buchanan Upshur High School in Miss Westfall's senior English class. And I'm currently enrolled in the AP Computer Science class at the school. And I'm going to college in the fall, West Virginia Wesleyan, for a computer science major. Um, my current interests in computer are in computer security. I would like to go into network security or computer forensics. And so when I thought of my senior project, I thought of a way to tie that into my project. I decided to do my project on identity theft and phishing. And phishing is the practice of sending emails under false pretenses to an individual to steal their information. So it would seem like it comes from a legitimate source. But when you visit the when you visit the email, and even though it looks real, you could click on a link and it could take you to a potentially harmful website. It could give you a virus, it could steal your information, it could do any number of things. So, for, so the first part of the project, we had to write a research paper. And I honestly didn't know what phishing was at the beginning of my project. But I knew about various things such as keyloggers or identity theft. But I had to find a way to tie these things into my project. So I wrote my paper on just the basics of phishing and identity theft, and I also went into some of the legalities, like uh, the laws that protect you from such things. Once I had my paper wrote, I had to figure out a way I wanted to tie phishing into my project. And the way I did this was I designed a few fake websites and a few fake emails. And I did this with the help of my mentor, Mr. Cosner, who is a teacher at West Virginia Wesleyan College. And he teaches art, but in his spare time, he designs websites. So he had knowledge of PHP and HTML and things like that that would help me in my project. So once I got my project outlined roughly, I began to find ways to implement these things in my project. To host the websites, I used Apache's HTTPD server which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Daemon. And I hosted the websites on localhost, which means that they're not accessible to the general public. So that would protect from any future concerns about people stumbling upon the site. Um, once I had Apache installed working correctly, I installed PHP, which stands for Hypertext Precursor. That means that when you open a website, it's a Hypertext Precursor, so it runs before all the HTML. And what it's used for is used to handle information and forms. So say you're logging into a website and it has a username and password. Your username form and your password are handled by the PHP and that information is sent elsewhere so that it can be uh, dealt with and authenticate you to log in. Um, when I got PHP working, I wrote a little PHP script with the help of Mr. Cosner. And the goal of this script was to take the information from the login forms on the website and save them to the text document on the computer. Now this, that was pretty difficult because it was a brand new scripting language to me. I never used it. So that took plenty of hours to work out. But once that was working correctly, uh, I had to tie it to the login button on the website. So the way I actually did the websites was you can download a website off the internet. You can go to File and Save As and HTML. And when you save it as just HTML, you can edit the website freely. It won't appear on the general internet, but when it when you open it on your computer, any changes that you've made are going to appear. So once I had saved the website on Apache's localhost server, and I had edited things such as the sign-in button and made the website appear correctly, then it was ready to go. One extra thing I did to the PHP script was when you click sign in, it redirects you to a, it'll first handle the information that you supply in the forms and then it will redirect you to the actual website. So when an individual would happen to enter in their information into the website, it would just redirect them to the actual website. And most users if they don't pay attention to the address bar, or that don't, or they're not careful what links they click on in emails, they're just going to think they typed in an, um, a credential wrong or something. So once I had the website working correctly, I attempted to set up an email server, which was not very easy. Um, for these, I tried to use Apache's Apache James server, HTML server, and Windows Server 2003. 
none of which I managed to work correctly. Apache is very frustrating because it doesn't have a GUI, which means graphical interfa user interface. So basically you have a text document with a thousand lines, and if one character is wrong, it might not work at all. So after many, many hours of trying to get that to work, I, I had to let that resource go. So Windows Server, it was only able to send emails on, the lo on a local network without buying a domain. And HTML Server, it could not send emails to an external network without buying a domain either. So what I eventually had to do was resort to an online service, and I contacted deadmail.com or deadfake.com and hoaxmail.com, and I asked them for permission to use the, their website for my project. And they both okayed it, and hoaxmail was even generous enough to upgrade my account to a premium status for free. So when you originally send an email with one of these websites without a paid account, it will say this email is sent from such and such website and it's not real. So they let me um, bypass that. Unfortunately, their website didn't work quite the same way as Deadfakes. And with Deadfakes, you were able to actually copy an email with HTML in it and paste it and edit it from there. But with Hoaxmail, I was not able to do that. So once I had these things working correctly, that was pretty much the bulk of the project. You would send an email to an individual, they would receive it, and I had to replace the links in the email with my fake local host links. And when, they, when you would visit the local host links, they would take you to a site on my computer, and it would be a replica of a, a replication of a phishing website. Um, thanks to this project, I've learned a lot about computers. I, mean, I already knew a good deal, but this has exposed me to more software, such as open source software or email servers. I've learned a lot about emails and how the simple message transfer protocol works, um, networks, and websites in general, just all sorts of things dealing with computers. I've also learned a lot about myself as well, uh, mainly about things such as time management, because in the beginning of my project, I didn't manage my time as wisely as I should have. So some of the things took longer than they should have eventually. Um, I've also become a better public speaker. I know it doesn't seem like it, but this is a lot better than I was at the beginning of the year, so I've improved upon that aspect as well. And thanks to this project, I am now even more interested in the, fields of, in the field of computer security, and I plan to continue my education in the field of college. section is actually my final project. It was my, the final outcome of my project. And as I said, I'm Ben Stingo. I'm, uh, I plan on going to Glenville State this fall to major in music education, to teach any, anywhere from general edu music education, teach choir, teach band, uh, whatever I can get. Um, at the beginning of the year, I had to do a research paper on the field of the study I picked, music education. And underneath that field, I had to pick a branch of what I'd like to study under that. And so I thought of keep why, why music should be kept in the classroom, why music's an important part of education systems today. And through some of the research, I, I went in knowing some things, um, why music is important. I know why it's important to me, but how am I supposed to tell someone who doesn't like music why it's important? How am I supposed to talk to a school official who may think music isn't important and wants to take it out and say, listen, this is why this is important and why music should be kept in it. So I wanted to learn some more concrete facts. So, and I looked up, there were was, there was some statistics saying schools with music programs were, had higher attendance rates, higher grade grades, um, 
you could say it's coincidental. I doubt it. And if you go to school with a, if all you go to school for is a math class, if there's only a math class, how many kids do you think are going to attend? Same thing with English. So that's why there's such a broad spectrum. Kids like art. Put art in the school. Kids will like to go to art. Some of the, some of the other things I learned through the research was there were some psychological aspects of why music is important and um, evolutionary aspects even. Humans are the only creatures alive that enjoy music. You don't see cheetahs in the wild picking up a guitar and playing it and enjoying it. So, and I mean, it's something you you know, but it's when you actually when you sit there, it's a fact. It's a fact. Music. Humans enjoy music. So that, that I thought that was pretty powerful. So if if music is that powerful, why shouldn't it be in school? Why shouldn't why shouldn't the humans students grow up with something like that in school so I, some of those I, th- I thought were pretty powerful points so o- overall I learned, I learned a few new things through the paper but most, most of it just reinforced what I already knew or felt about music in the school system and from there the second semester I had to, we actually had to start working on our final senior project and I chose to instead of learning how to teach I, I decided to pick a more practical aspect of what I want to learn I want to learn how to teach someone music. So what better way to learn how to teach something is to be able to do something so well that if someone asks you how to do it, you have first-hand knowledge. Like, I said, like uh, if you want to ask someone how to play basketball, would you rather ask some guy off the street or would you rather ask an NBA player? So I'd rather be an NBA player with music than some guy on the street you hope to play basketball well. So I decided to compose a jazz tune for the, the Cannon Upshur High School Jazz Band. And from there, I had, to, I had to pick a mentor, so I picked uh, Mr. Danny Williams up at the high school. And if you don't know him, which I hope you do, if you don't, he's a great musician, one of the best I've known. If you ever get to hear him play, you would understand why I pick him, but you don't really get to hear him play very much. And I picked him for his expertise, because I know whenever I have a question about any kind of music thing, he has some idea or can answer it. So I spent a lot of time alone with this project, directing. I sat composing different melodies, different chord arrangements, different different formats to make this tune go through. And from from there, I I created a melody which I based my whole tune off of. I wish I could show it to you, but it's a little inconvenient to uh, transport a 20, 30 person jazz band. So I apologize for that. But if you ask Mr. Lampin, and he should be able to. To say if it was good or not. I hope he says it's good, but it's his opinion. <laughs> and from there, so from writing this tune, it was a lot like writing an essay. If you if you have your foundation, if you have your idea of what you're going to base it off of, you have an intro where you're going to set your listener up for what they're going to hear. And I have an intro in the song, which is a bass intro. If anyone knows melody, they they might be familiar with what a bass introduction would sound like. But I use that to set the listener up. And I have then, once they're set up for what they're about to hear, they hear the melody of the tune. There's a section where there's, there's uh, another different melody. It'll conclude with the melody again and then end. But it, it's, a, it's a little bit hard to describe a song without hearing it. So I, it's, again, one of those uh, things I can't apologize enough for. I'd like you all to hear it. I'm pretty proud of it. And through the project, I learned... Uh, several things about composition, which is which I, I hope to find, va- which I will find valuable later on. If, if, if a future student comes up and asks me, "Hey, Mr. Stingo, what do you do on a, a, a one six two five turnaround in a blues progression?" I'd be like, "Well, this is what you do. I've done it before. It's tough." Um, and through the project, it, it helped reinforce that I want to be a music educator. Uh, maybe I'm not so cut out to be a practical composer. Maybe I'm not cut out for actually writing this stuff. But maybe if I have a student that one day wants to be with someone who can write that stuff, I can, I can promote them and encourage them to grow into that facet of music. And in conclusion, uh, it took a lot of work to create that song in the back. I hope you all got a chance to look at it. Um, it, 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 I hope it looks as difficult as it was to compose. It's, it was pretty tough. Um, and in this part, it, during my regular seat, uh, presentation, I would have got you to listen to them, but um, that's all I got. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you.
I did have the pleasure of, of not only hearing Ben do it on his guitar for us individually, but then he took us into the band room and the jazz band did perform it, and it was absolutely amazing and fantastic. He did a great job. He, he took us through the very basics of, of how he got the melody in his head all the way to the performance. And I was very impressed and very proud of him. He did a great job. We are so proud. I feel like I have wrote a Nicholas Sparks book right there. It is my prized possession. I won't even let my mother touch it. I am just so proud of it. Um, we have overcame so many obstacles and challenges through this. And we started on our portfolio, and we first started on our research paper, first quarter. And um, we had to choose a career, and then choose a topic about our career. I chose, as long as, as well as Kylie, the education field, because that was the career that I had wanted to go in since I was in kindergarten. I found it, I've always found it fascinating. It was so great. And basically, my topic for my paper and my whole project was to discover the best education method for students and to prove that it's not just the teacher's responsibility or the parent's responsibility or even, I mean, it is ultimately the student's responsibility to learn. But I wanted to prove that all three of them are necessary in order to have the best education possible. When I first started my senior project, I had one thing in my head, that children need to be in the 21st century. Through this, I worked with a student that um, had a few disabilities. I worked 15 hours with her or more and um, I learned through my whole process that each child is so different. They cannot, one child can look at an iPad and just play with it and just go from so many different apps, technology, stuff like that. Some kids do so much better with seeing a worksheet and being one-on-one -on -one with a um, teacher other than being in a group of a variety. So through this, I have learned that each child is different. And if you approach one, if you approach each child all the same, you will see a downgrade. You cannot, you cannot teach one, ch one child the way you will another. That is also another discovery that I made with my project. Um, I always thought that, you know, kinesthetic is probably the best way for every child to learn because I know I love to get up and I love to learn and, you know, move around and play with clay and do all kinds of make models. But and it also proved effective with my student that I tutored. But unfortunately, I did discover that, well, not necessarily unfortunately, but she also <laughs> responded well to visual and auditory lessons as well. And I also discovered I did do some different experiments where I involved parents and when I didn't involve parents. And just to see the growth from when her parents helped compared to when they didn't help, when I didn't let them know that they needed to assist her, it was just phenomenal. And that was a little twist that I found at the end that the best education method is to get every part working together like cogs meshing and a clock. Otherwise, time can't move forward and you can't progress. And I thought that was a big discovery as well. I think the best feeling I had through my all my hours with the young little girl that I tutored and through my whole senior project is realizing that I can help a student. And that's what I honestly think that teachers that is the best feeling for them, is to be able to help because um, there were a lot of problems that, you know, in the school system there are so many problems you have to work with, parent involvement, um, just different learning styles. And I got a little bit. <laughs> it's okay. Um, um, what was I saying? And when her parent, her parent was not involved very much, and I had a, a lot of trouble with that because the first day that I went to tutor her, 
I made so many papers. I was so excited. I felt like a teacher. I had so many forms that she could fill out for, you know, photo release. I could take pictures of her. She signed them and gave them right back to me. And I just went home, and I remember telling my parents I was so crushed because I did all that work, and I felt like it wasn't appreciated. And the best advice my mom and dad gave me is you have to help that child with or without their parent. You can try to involve them, but you also have to step back and realize not all parents are involved as my parents. And that is what, you know, a lot of kids can develop a lot better with or without this, but if it wasn't for my parents, I would not be as successful as I am right now. I think the biggest thing for me was discovering how a sense of accomplishment, like when you see the accomplishment and the goals that my student reached in her eyes and just to see the progression was just so great and it was so fantastic. And to see her knowledge just grow and it was just, it was really enriching and very enlightening. And then to also see how happy her mother was, it was also another reward. I also think that the biggest thing that I liked about this project was the sense of accomplishment that I got being a teacher and being able to teach students and just having so much fun, even though I did have multiple difficulties and struggles. And it was just, and like Kylie and her experiment and her all her things, it was very difficult for me when they didn't seem to appreciate all the hard work that I got to put through and I did for them, which was also another growth that I learned through this process. And also we had to do our portfolio, which is <laughs> I think that's the most thing I'm so proud of. Um, we had to write resumes, letters, um, so many writings that I have learned this year. I can take to college. I have used my resume for other certifications I have to um, do a, to graduate this year. Um, letters, I now don't put I and so in my letters. And I have just learned so much how to write. And I am so excited to go to college now and be able to write and hopefully, you know, be in my English and be like, you know, Professor, you can't say I. And you can't put so in your letters. Because Miss Westfall said. <laughs> so I'm very proud of my portfolio. I just, I worked on it almost every night and I would show my mom because I was so excited. And the page protectors make me feel very educated. <laughs> and it's very exciting. You're touching our prized possessions right now. Yeah. <laughs> those, those are our lives right there. Um, I really, I, the portfolio and the presentation and the project itself, yes, it has definitely helped us with our future college plans. But for those who are just going straight into the workforce, like from the Fred Everly Technical mm -hmm. Center, the stuff that they have learned, like resumes, you're going to always need a resume no matter where you work. And presentations, you got to speak with them like informatively and then you also got to speak with them one-on-one -on -one with the questioning at the end which also is, proves very effective in interviews and everything. So this was not just something for you to be able to continue your education on further. It was also to be preparing you for the future if you're going just straight into the workforce and I think that was just totally fantastic and I think that that's amazing that Mrs. Westfall created something that could work universally for everybody. And at the end, we had our presentation where we got to demonstrate <clears throat> all the skills that we have learned, all our writings, our um, projects, pictures, resumes. Uh, Mr. Frazier was one of my judges. I was, I could feel the sweat running off of me when I walked into that room. But walking out of that room, I remember just running to Miss Westfall's class, just biggest smile on my face. I have never been so relieved. I went and got ice cream right after that. <laughs> I was so relieved this whole year. It was down to that day that I got to present, and I was, I was so proud. I couldn't. I called my mom. I mean, I just was so proud. And that is, and I'm sure, the way that Miss Westfall has, like, looked at us when we walked in there, she was proud of us. That is, what I want to do when I grow up and. Um, work in the, you know, work with kids. I want to see that expression on their face that I help them. I help them accomplish something that they will forever know that I help them do. And that is one thing I'm just so excited about. Unfortunately, through this project, I did discover that education is not the field for me. It was definitely a new eye-opening experience, and I have so much more respect for teachers. <coughs> not that I didn't respect them before, but just a whole nother galaxy kind of thing of respect and it was just 
really great, and it was very nice to see how excited Mrs. Westfall was when we and we were so excited too. I ran up to her room, I kicked off my heels, and I was like booking it <laughs> up there, and it was just so exciting. And I think that that's also what I want to do. I know I still want to work with kids, perhaps in the medical field, or even just one-on-one -on -one tutoring itself. But just seeing that and knowing and growing so much, just it really, I wouldn't trade any of this for anything. I think that's it, but we would like those portfolios back in the time. <laughs> <laughs>
that uh, on the surveys, they were in the mail, we received ours at our house on, on Saturday. And through today's mail, we probably received 75 to 80 of them back already. So uh, that's a really good sign. And the survey is online, and there's people that are participating via the internet also. Very pleased with that. I had the opportunity to meet with Buchanan Upshur Middle School and go over the staff survey with them, and they had some real good questions and comments in regard to that facility. And I think they were appreciative that we shared the results with them. And what else? Oh, we wanted to talk about uh, Clerk of the Works. We, we have not received any applications for the Clerk of the Works, which we put in the newspaper two weeks, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So we'll be talking with the architect tomorrow and, and seeing what, we'll have to repost it, but see what we can do to maybe get it out in different places to get some of the important works. And that would be it on school facilities. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Thank you. Moving on to item nine, financial. Anything tonight other than the budget here? Just the budget. Uh, just the budget. Before, before we get to the budget, the, the budget you'll be looking at is pretty much the same as what we talked at, about in the workshop. There were a few changes you wanted me to make, which have been made. Also, some of the grants that are in Fund 61, we've got revised revenue numbers for those, so we had to redo some of those. And then traded some expenditures between 61 and 11. So it's essentially the same budget, but it's just slightly different. But what you have in your agenda tonight was with the fund group. With the changes that we with the changes talked about. about here. So I guess we'll move right in into our public hearing. Do we have anybody here who'd like to speak for our public hearing on the budget 2012-2013? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, approving the budget 2012-2013. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Bellman. Any further questions or discussions on the budget? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We have a budget. Okay. No more spending indiscriminately out there. Let's see. It's consent agenda. Parent chaperones. <laughs> Both the list that you have been given and the list that was given to you with your agenda. Recommendation by the superintendent is to approve. Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Sugar. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Bellamy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Correspondence and information. Not at this time. Nothing this evening. Personnel. You all had a chance to review the Revised personnel list. Motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation for personnel. Thank you, Dr. Roll. Second. Thank you, Mr. Johns. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, moving right along, we're into policies. First reading and approval of new policy 2017. Educational purpose and acceptable use of electronic resources, technology, and the internet. Attachment E. This is a brand new policy sent from the state. Yes. It's, and it does not have anything to do with uh, cell phones, I know. Now that the cell phone portion of that is included in 4373 under student code. Hmm. Talks about electronic devices, but not necessarily the cell phones. Yeah. Well. Okay. So this is just a, a state policy we have to adopt. Yes. To adopt. Okay. And uh, first reading and approval of revised policy section 3.11, policy 2016, special ed. That is our existing policy that we are just renumbering. Uh, it it is and it isn't. And it isn't. This incorporates the changes that the State Department made in their policy 2419, which 
we adopt is our policy. So again, it's a first reading because it's a change in the state policy. And they require us to look at that each each year and make sure that we're aware of the changes that they have made. Right. Okay. And anything outstanding as far as changes go? No. Kind of new. Yeah. Uh, the only really the, uh, change that we were looking at was The, no more RTI? Well, support for personalized learning is very similar. Yeah, they call it something different, essentially. Yeah. Cycle. Right. right. Okay, thank you. Okay, so motion to approve new policy 2017. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Bell. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Souter. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And motion to approve the uh, revised policy, section 3.11, policy 2016. Thank you, Dr. Allen. Second. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Seward. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. At the same time, motion carries. Okay. Item number 16. Adjustments to the new calendar. We haven't even started the new year yet. What's going on? Well, when we when we submitted our calendar to the State Department, they, they contacted us back and informed us that we do have a state policy, or actually it's the state superintendent's interpretation, which states you can't have graduation any earlier than five days prior to the last day, uh, or the last scheduled day of school. In order to allow for a graduation next year to be on a Friday evening as opposed to a Monday evening, uh, it made sense to us to, to alter our calendar and uh, we have an OS day scheduled in April, turn that into an instructional day and move that OS day to the end of the calendar so that we can get the last day of the instructional day uh, within that five day window so that we can continue to have graduation on a weekend so that we can participate project graduation and other activities as opposed to having graduation on a weeknight. So this, this change, um, is in, in, in our view, is, is minor to accomplish that goal without having to make uh, change graduation. It gives us three OS days on, on Fridays, but it also gives us three OS days at the end of the school year. So it kind of splits that difference. If, uh, this year we had them all in the spring. Last year we had them all at the end of the calendar. So this year kind of splits it. So I would recommend that these changes be made and we can get this down to the State Department as early as tomorrow morning to get it on their approval so we can get our calendar approved for next year. Everybody understand? Motion to approve. The motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Second. Thank you, Mr. Johns. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carries. Okay, now we're into our favorite part of the meeting, delegations and public comments. Uh, we have Ms. Neely and Mr. Groby this evening signed up. Do you like to speak in the executive session? Yes? Okay. Then we'll, we'll, we'll mind, wouldn't mind the wait just for a few minutes. Uh, board member comments? I just want to say I truly enjoyed listening to these kids. That was wonderful. Uh, we don't get to do that enough, I don't think. Um, also, um, I know fall sports are going to be gearing up soon, and there's a lot of media coverage about concussions and heat-related um, injuries and stuff like that. And I know some schools have <coughs> concussion management plans, heat-related <coughs> management type plans. And I was wondering, do we have that in place? I know we're talking a little bit about having training for um, or continuing ed on concussions and that sort of thing for our coaches. Our, our um, plan for this summer is to not only have it for head coaches and, and our trainers, but to also have it for uh, phys ed teachers. And I actually received a phone call the other day from a, from a classroom teacher that said, boy, we'd like to know about head injuries also. Because oftentimes we do get head injuries in, in the classroom and sometimes the appropriate first aid isn't administered right at that time. So we are indeed planning um, 
workshops and staff development in that realm this year. It will be mandated of head coaches and trainers, and we're going to also put it into the regular ed classroom. So we're looking for resources of who can we bring in to do that training. As a matter of fact, um, Mr. Heyman here, he was making a call to the State Department as well as the, the SSAC to see if they have an expert that could come up and do it. We want someone that's an expert in that field. We have such plans in place, a management plan that coaches or teachers or whoever can follow if, if they're presented with the problem? Or We do not at this point, and that will be part of that development over the summers to develop that, that kind of a plan. Now, do individual athletic trainers have that plan? I know that they're trained and they go to, to train. I don't know if they have a, a management plan in place or not. I know that they do certain things when a child comes back from an injury be sure that they're healthy enough to play. They also have to have doctors for releases. But as far as a full-blown management plan, that's something that we want to develop. Well, I know the SSAC, they have recommendations that the uh, National Federation of High School, the State of High School uh, Sports, they have recommendations. So maybe that's a place we start. And that's the contact those. we're going to use. And, and also use some of our local physicians and see if they can help us. Now, will you be reporting back to us after? I can certainly do that. Why don't we uh, why don't we try and have something back to us well before the first of August? We can, we can do that. I mean, football practice. We can at least have. Yeah, well, we would like to have it before that. Uh, and I don't so, know, uh, Mr. Roy. Do you know through your when you were coaching, do the rules clinics address that also? Uh, All our rules coaches are. Right. Rules clinics are more for them. Been for a few years, uh, but uh, they were more regarding rules and things about the play of the game or play or uh, illegal holds in wrestling or, or whatever. Injuries such as concussions were more delegated to the trainer and you know, we, we were given some uh, uh, suggestions as to how we might recognize symptoms and things like that but as far as treatment or care we, we were told to immediately you know turn that over to a better qualified person, the trainer. Or, or someone along those lines. So there, there is protocol in place uh, as per the trainer and, and those who are, are professional in that field. But as far as a uh, <coughs> protocol that everybody follows in our county sports, I, I'll work with Mr. Langford to see if that exists and if it doesn't create it. I know there's, there's free materials for coaches and, mm -hmm. and even parents, um, you know, they have those things that you even put on clipboards or hang in dugouts or whatever from the Centers for Disease Control that you know, we could have access to and there's free training there. Uh, I don't know if that's something we'd want to incorporate into the athletics. But since we're starting those practices here in just a month or something like that, um, and the heat's going to be those are those are issues I think, um, and we don't want to we don't want to wait until we're hit with something serious before we address it. I'm sorry, we were just just talking here. We we do intend to put a plan together. We'll report back to you on what that plan is going to look like. It won't be implemented in July, but we'll get it back to you to see what we're going to do. We'll have that in July. Well, I think it's good not only for protection of the athletes, the protection of the coaches, and everybody involved, you know, and, and we, we need to look out for those kids, especially in that age group, they have a high rate of, you know, heat-related illness, high rate of concussions, um, so I think that's something we need to address. And like I said earlier, we not only want those that participate in the athletic portion of it, but we want our classroom teachers to have right. basic knowledge, too. I call the office here, or do I just that basic knowledge? I'm glad to hear that you're that. being contacted by teachers yes. because it is a problem, I think. I don't want to say a problem. It is something that teachers are presented with from time to time. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk more about that. We'll get a, we'll get a plan back in July. Uh, plenty of time to talk about it before we actually have this athletic school. Okay. Anything else? Ella Nichol saw me in Sunday school and she commented about the, the 
wood chip issue, and I, I walked by on the sidewalk out here, and I, I guess kids are kids, they play hard. Uh, it's hard to keep wood chips off the sidewalk, public sidewalks, but it might be something we could look at over the summer uh, with uh, maintenance and grass barriers and uh, things like that. Um, I mean, we'll be, we'll be fixing things up, I know. You may be able to raise it, but you have to be careful because you, have, you can't have a tripping. Right, right. Uh, wood chips are a problem on playgrounds every single year, and every every few weeks they ask our custodians to get out and, and get them back where they need to be. But it, it's always an ongoing problem. Yeah. A little bigger yeah. issue though here in town, where you have yeah. playgrounds next to right. a public walk. Yeah, right, right on the side. Good thing. Look out. We want to be good neighbors. Yes, we do. And we certainly we would be remiss if we didn't mentioned that we had a bionic woman going to high school. Now, if you missed that, you really ought to read the paper more often. But Emily Goblin is, without a doubt, one of the most fantastic athletes that we have ever had in our Canada High School. And those Goblins turn out some good ones. <laughs> but but now that girl, uh, to do what she did in that short space of time, uh, to win those four events, to set records, I mean... <laughs> What is she eating for breakfast? <laughs> Just fantastic. So our hats off to her, and we will honor her and that whole team uh, at a later date. So now we're going to go on. We have a, our next meeting will be June twelfth. Unless we're thinking, still talking about having a June fifth meeting. We are. We, I'd like to recommend that we have a June fifth meeting. We okay. take care of some personnel issues and some other issues. Okay. So we may have a, another meeting on June fifth, but. Uh, Stay tuned for that. Certainly our next regular meeting will be June 12th, here at 7 o'clock. Uh, we may have one on June 5th here at 7 o'clock, right? Here? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to go into executive session to talk about some personnel issues, as well as deal with our uh, public delegation. And uh, we thank you all for coming, especially you. Glad you could come. We love it when people who are going to be honored actually come. Yeah. A motion to go into executive session. Thank you, Mrs. Bell. Second. Thank you, Mr. Howard John. All those say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you all for coming.